The 1948 World Series saw the Cleveland Indians against the Boston Braves. The Braves had won the National League pennant for the first time since the Miracle Braves team of 1914, while the Indians had spoiled a chance for the only All-Boston World Series by winning a one-game playoff against the Boston Red Sox for the American League flag. Though superstar pitcher Bob Feller failed to win either of his two starts, the Indians won the series in six games to capture their second championship and their first since 1920 as well as their last to the present date. It was the first World Series to be televised beyond the previous year's limited New York Schenectady Philadelphia Baltimore Washington network and was announced by famed sportcasters Red Barber, Tom Hussey in Boston and Van Patrick in Cleveland. This was the second appearance in the Fall Classic for both teams, with the Indians' lone previous appearance coming in a 1920 win against the Brooklyn Dodgers and the Braves' lone previous appearance coming in a 1914 win against the Philadelphia Athletics. Consequently, this was the first, and to date only, World Series in which both participating teams had previously played in, but not yet lost, a previous World Series. Currently, this phenomenon can only be repeated if either the Miami Marlins or the Arizona Diamondbacks play against either the Toronto Blue Jays or the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim in a future World Series. Television coverage of the World Series increased this year, but due to the medium still being in its infancy coverage was strictly regional. Games played in Boston could only be seen in the Northeast, while when the series shifted to Cleveland those games were the first to be aired in Chicago, Pittsburgh, Milwaukee, St. Louis, Detroit and Toledo. This was the only World Series from 1947 to 1958 not to feature a New York team, and also the last World Series until 1957 not won by a New York team which the Braves won over the Yankees, after they had relocated to Milwaukee. The teams would meet again in the 1995 World Series won by the Braves—by then relocated to Atlanta. This was the first World Series and the last until 2016 where the series score was even. <laughs> <laughs> Summary Al Cleveland Indians vs. NI Boston Braves 2. Topic Matchups Topic Game One Braves pitcher Johnny Sane and Indians pitcher Bob Feller were engaged in a scoreless pitcher's duel when the Braves came to bat in the bottom of the eighth inning. Feller walked Braves catcher Bill Salkel to open the inning. Braves manager, Billy Southworth then replaced the slow-footed Salkeld with Phil Marzi, who entered the game as a pinch runner. Mike McCormick followed with a sacrifice bunt, advancing Marzi to second base. Feller issued an intentional walk to Eddie Stanky, who was replaced by Sibby Sisti. Feller then tried to pick off Marzi at second base. Indians shortstop Lou Boudreau appeared to tag Marzi out, but umpire Bill Stewart called him safe. Tommy Holmes proceeded to hit a single that allowed Marzi to score the only run of the game, giving the Braves a 1 0 victory. The umpire's controversial ruling touched off heated debates among the media and fans, especially after Associated Press photographs of the play were published. Although Feller allowed only two hits, he took the loss in what would be the closest he ever came to winning a World Series game. Upon his death in 1990, Marzi's will revealed that he really was out on the pickoff play. Topic: <laughs> Game two. The second game also made television history when a live broadcast of the Indians-Braves matchup was shown aboard the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad's Marylander passenger train traveling between Washington, D.C. and New York City, using a receiver operated by Bendix Corporation technicians. An Associated Press reporter observing the demonstration said, "...technically, it was surprisingly good." The Braves scored a run in the first off Bob Lemon on Bob Elliott's RBI single with two on, but Lemon held them scoreless for the rest of the game. 
After three shutout innings, Lou Boudreau hit a lead-off double in the fourth off Warren Spann, then scored on Joe Gordon's single with Gordon advancing to second on the throw to home. One out later, Larry Doby's RBI single put the Indians up 2-1. Next inning, Dale Mitchell hit a lead-off single, moved to second on a sacrifice bunt and scored on Boudreaux's single. The Indians scored one more run in the ninth off Nels Potter when Jim Hegan reached on an error, moved to third on two groundouts and scored on Bob Kennedy's single. The series was tied 1-1 heading to Cleveland. <laughs> Game 3 For the third straight game, no home runs were hit by either team. This would not happen again in a World Series until 2014. The game's two runs came on Larry Doby's ground out in the third after a double and walk and Jim Hegan's RBI single after a single and walk in the fourth, both off Vern Bickford. Gene Bearden pitched a complete shutout, allowing five hits while striking out four, as the Indians took a 2-1 series lead. Game 4 Steve Gromek of the Indians and Johnny Sane of the Braves pitched complete games each. The Indians struck first when Dale Mitchell hit a lead-off single in the first and scored on Lou Boudreau's double, then added to their lead on Larry Doby's home run in the third. Marv Ricketts led off home run in the seventh cut the Indians' lead to 2-1, but they held on to take a 3-1 series lead. Game 5 Satchel Page appeared for the Indians, becoming the first black pitcher to take the mound in World Series history. The previous day's single-game attendance record was broken with 86,288 fans. After two lead-off singles, Bob Elliott's three-run home run in the first off Indian starter Bob Feller made it 3-0 Braves. Dale Mitchell's lead-off home run in the bottom half off Nels Potter put the Indians on the board. Elliott's second home run of the game in the third made it 4-1 Braves, but in the fourth after a lead-off single and walk, Wally Judnick's RBI single made it 4-2 Braves, then one out later, Jim Hegan's three-run home run put the Indians in front 5-4 and knocked Potter out of the game. Bill Solkeld's home run in the sixth tied the game. Next inning, Tommy Holmes hit a lead-off single, moved to second on a sacrifice bunt, and scored on Earl Torgerson's RBI single. Ed Kleeman relieved Feller and allowed a walk, two-run single to Marv Rickett, and another walk. Russ Christopher then allowed RBI singles to Mike McCormick and Eddie Stanky. Warren Spann's sacrifice fly-off page capped the game scoring at 11-5. Spann pitched five and two-thirds shutout innings of relief for the win, forcing a Game 6 in Boston. <laughs> game 6 The Indians struck first in Game 6 when Dale Mitchell hit a lead-off double in the third off Bill Voisel and scored on Lou Boudreau's RBI double, but the Braves tied the game on Mike McCormick's RBI single with two on off Bob Lemon in the fourth. A walk loaded the bases, but Voisel grounded out to end the inning. Joe Gordon's lead-off home in the sixth put the Indians back in front 2-1. After a one-out walk and single, Jim Hegan's RBI ground out extended their lead to 3-1. Three straight singles in the eighth by Ken Keltner, Thurman Tucker and Eddie Robinson made it 4-1 Indians. In the bottom of the inning, the Braves loaded the bases off Lemon on a single, double and walk. Clint Konatz's sacrifice fly and Phil Marzi's RBI double off Gene Bearden made it 4-3 Indians, but Bearden pitched a scoreless ninth for the save to give the Indians the championship, currently their last. <laughs> <laughs> Composite box 1948 World Series 4 to 2 Cleveland Indians AL over Boston Braves NL equals equals notes <laughs>